Hi, my name is Brad Neal here with the University of Indianapolis, and it is time to talk about some more substances and solutions and how to talk about those amongst one another. Okie doke. So for this video to make more sense, I strongly suggest that you check out the reading here above on the OpenStax 2E textbook. Time to start working some example problems. Um, I guess right after we go over some definitions. So the three definitions that uh, I think possibly are the trickiest for folks that are listed in this part of the book are the mass percent, volume percent, and the part per million, part per billion. I'd argue that the part per million, part per billion is probably uh, the trickiest. Uh, the other ones aren't bad as long as you keep your definitions straight. So let's get going. Um, the mass percent. So mass percent um, is when you have the like usually a solid that gets dissolved up into a liquid. Um, so you're going to write out the mass of that solid and then it's going to be the total mass of your solution. Now we're going to work a problem here in a little bit where that matters. Remember mass of solution is going to be mass of solvent and solute combined. Okay, and that's gonna be different from volume. So this is not the same thing as molarity. However, if you have one and you know density, you can probably get to the other. Um, volume percent is going to be when you have a liquid solute uh, being dissolved. Um, just by convention, we typically are gonna say volume uh, percent. And so like, oops, let's go back there. So. Um, something like if you have a beverage or whatever, it will say like percent by volume on it if it's got more than one component inside of it. Um, alcoholic beverages are pretty common for this. You take that, um, the volume uh, alcohol by content, it's going to say, um, I don't know, let's say for a stereotypical uh, beer beverage, it's going to be like 5%. Well, so it's 5% ethanol by volume over for the entire volume of the solution. Um, proof is just when you um, take the volume percent and double it. Part per million, part per billion. These are gonna be terms that you'll use, especially um, when you're dealing with low concentrations of things. So we're gonna work an example. A lot of times pollutants are measured in part per millions or part per billions. Uh, to determine what the threshold level is that is deemed as safe um, or acceptable. Um, usually it's acceptable, not necessarily safe. Sometimes they're the same thing. Long story for another day. Um, but these are our general definitions. The part per million, part per billion, that's the one that definitely going to try to drive home with you guys with some examples. Okay. So first off, we have what is the mass of sodium chloride um, given the information that we have right here in this question. So we got to get the writing tablet because we don't ever start with anything prepared. Sometimes we do. So we get the writing tablet and let's go to the proverbial board. Okay, so we've got ourselves a situation where we want to use the equation that was given to us, I guess, um, try to make that a little easier for ourselves. We want to do that mass percent equation here. So mass percent and then that equals mass of component, usually our solute, um, if it's a binary uh, thing. So meaning it's a sol one, one solute, one solvent. Um, if it's got a whole bunch of stuff in there, then this tech more technically correct definition is the right way to say it. Mass component, I'm just going to say comp over mass solution, S-O-L-N, times 100. You can't see that. That's great. So we go back to that question, and you can see that. Um, the question then is going to, we're going to use this equation that's right here. So, time to start plugging and chugging some numbers. What mass of sodium chloride is there? 60 grams of 15% or of a 15% sodium chloride solution. Um, we could go through and we could punch in these things, but the key thing I would hope that you see this here is it's specifically telling us in the problem that 15% of this solution is sodium chloride. So, if we have 60 grams of our thing, 
60 grams of our solution, 15% of it is going to be sodium chloride. So we really can multiply that by our mass percent, but not in that percent form. We have to write it out as that percentage. So 0 0.15. And the thing that's going to be left over is the mass of our sodium chloride. So that 9 and then 0 0.0. I know the sig figs aren't right there. I didn't write the question out the, the most beautifully, so really it should just be nine. So let's go ahead and I guess get rid of that zero because I know somebody's out there thinking it, and you're right. You are right. And this is going to be nine grams of sodium chloride ran out that way. Okay, so that's like an easier version of one of these kinds of questions. Let's do a harder one. Okay, um, what mass of sugar would have to be dissolved in 60 grams of water to yield a 25% solution? All right, this is where we're going to definitely have to use our definition to our advantage. Okay, so thinking about that definition that we just had written out, the mass percent is mass composition, mass solution times 100. We can do a little bit of rearrangement here. Um, and we can end up with something that, well, let's just punch it in, shall we? So mass percent here is going to be that 0. Point, um, 0. 0.25 uh, times, wait, yep, 0. 0.25 time, or equals, rather, the mass of our component. So mass comp. And then it's going to be down here, the mass of our solution. And then there's the whole times 100 thing. Um, so really, the times 100 thing over here should then be making this the 25% that the question originally gave us. If we start simplifying here, you could say like, oh, well, we've got the mass of the component. We have the mass of our solution. The trick of it is here with the mass of our solution, our solution is made up of two different things. The mass of our solution is going to be the mass of our water, which is true. That's our solvent. But what's the mass of our solute? That's what the question's asking, isn't it? So we have to take into consideration mass of sugar right here. We're also going to say, well, this right here is the mass of sugar. So realistically then, if we're gonna write out this question um, or write up this equation here, we can rewrite this out and we can say the 25% is gonna be equal to X over and then the 60 grams H2O plus X, and specifically X is gonna be grams of sugar. So we can write that up here too, grams sugar. times 100. Again, this comes down to those definitions, specifically that definition of what is the definition of solution. And here it's the mass of our solution, so we have to include the mass of our solute and the mass of our solvent. And that's why we have x in two places. But the thing is, the x is the exact same in both places. So then this becomes just kind of a algebra problem, right? So we can do some mathy math. We can get rid of the 100 on both sides. And so we have uh, 0 0.25 equals uh, our x over 60 grams H2O plus our x grams of sugar. And we're going to continue this on out. We need to multiply both sides by that denominator and so the whole denominator here is going to be the 60 grams h2o plus our x grams of sugar we can't just cherry pick out we have to follow the rules of math throughout this entire thing and so then we end up with our nice little 0 0.25 multiplied by 60 grams h2o plus x grams of sugar equals x grams of sugar. Because really up here, this was our grams of sugar as well. I just forgot to write that out. 
So we carry stuff on through and 25 or 0.25 times 60 is 15, I think in most countries. So we have 15 plus uh, 0.25 X. I'm gonna drop the units for the time being just to make this go a little bit faster. Um, strictly speaking though, it's gonna be grams of sugar that we've got here. Um, equaling X, and so we subtract the 0 0.25 from both sides. So minus the 0 0.25, we end up with 15 equals uh, 0 0.75 X. X is gonna equal 20 grams of sugar. So the trick there on that problem isn't necessarily the math. The trick on that problem is the definition of solution. That's really where we have to remember stuff. Okay, now let's do not a dilution example. Sorry for that. What we've got here is a word problem. So this is information I took from the uh, state of Michigan. Um, regarding what is, what is an acceptable uh, amount of mercury. Um, I believe this was a protocol that they were developing back in 2018 for where they wanted to get to in terms of mercury concentration in uh, waterways because mercury is one of those things that really can make you pretty sick as a human being. Um, maybe you've read about Flint, Michigan or not. Um, the, whole, the old historical thing that we used to tell people was about um, that whole story of mad as a hatter. That's actually a thing. So you used to use mercury on pelts back in the olden days to cure the pelt to waterproof them. Um, but the mercury vapors that you would breathe in as a hatter um, would settle in your brain and the mercury um we have proven scientifically drops your IQ significantly. Um, and so the people who would get like long and long-term exposure to mercury would have mercury poisoning. Um, it would make them seem as though they were mad, crazy people. And so then you'd have uh, mad as a hatter, uh, like Alice in Wonderland, etc. So that phrase kind of where that's coming from. So the question here is, uh, given the information above, what is the mercury concentration for the protection of human health in units of PPM? The problem has a whole bunch of different units and a whole bunch of different numbers. So we have to figure out which number corresponds to the question. So it's telling us that it's 0 0.0013, that little funny U is our symbol for micro, if, in case you don't remember that. So 0 0.0013 micrograms per liter or 1.3 nanograms per liter for protection of wildlife. Okay, it's that's about human health, so that's probably not it. 0 0.0018 micrograms per liter or 1.8 nanograms per liter for the protection of human health. Aha, and so then the other one is 1.4 for protection of aquatic life and first do 0 0.0018 microgram or 1.8 nanogram per liter is where we're gonna wanna go. All right. So let's go ahead and let's get started. To the notes. All right. So this is where we need to talk a little bit about part per million. Um, your book goes through and it gives an explanation of part per million that is kind of like, okay, cool. The way that I always think about part per million is whatever's in my denominator. Oops, let's not say denominator first. Whatever's in my numerator and whatever's in my denominator, the, denominator, eh, we'll go with it. The separation in terms of units there needs to be 10 to the sixth. What do I mean by that? So let's say that we have kilograms, right? A kilogram, if we go to gram, is a separation of 1,000, right? 1,000 units. The separation between gram to milligram is 1,000 units. So together, this is a separation of 10 to the sixth if we go from kilogram to milligram. 
So the way I think about this is if I can get my numerator into milligrams and my denominator into kilograms or my numerator into milli and my denominator into kilo, I'm set for part per million because it's saying like one part, the thing that we're looking at per million uh, with respect to our denominator. And your book explains that, but like I said, this is the way, this makes way more sense to me. If I can get my numerator in milligram, my denominator in kilogram, that's a separation of a million. And so then it's parts per million. So if I've got that kind of understanding, it's time to do some dimensional analysis. Okay, Chabi. So the unit that we've got here for ourselves is going to be, and I'm going to take out my little handy dandy notes here. What we said for ourselves was one, well, let's scroll this down just a little bit so we can see that conversion. All right. The 1.8 nanogram of mercury per liter. Now, remember how I said I needed milligram and kilogram? Yeah, I need milligram and kilogram. Um, so in order to get to grams for both of my units, well, or my both my numerator and denominator, I'm set in my numerator because it's nanograms, but my liters, I need to convert that over to grams. To do a volume to mass unit conversion, I need to use, you're right, density. So my density here, because I'm mostly talking about water, it's a reasonable assumption to say it is 1.0 grams for every one milliliter. This is in liters. So if I spend the time here, I can say for every one liter, I got a thousand milliliters. The point of what I'm doing right here is to get my units such that my volume of my solution is now in milliliters. My volume of my solution is in milliliters. I can say one milliliter of my solution, which is mostly water, is probably gonna have a mass of one gram. And that is coming from density, right? Grams over milliliters is a density thing. So now I've got my denominator in grams, but I don't want it in grams, I want it in kilograms. So I just need to do one more little step here. And so then I've got my um, 1,000 grams for one kilogram. And to make things a little easier, I do want to put that solution there because I've got grams on the top and grams on the bottom, but the grams on the top are for my mercury. The grams, so this nanograms right here, that's referring to mercury versus the grams on the bottom, which are the grams of my solution. So this is where not just writing the units, but the units of what in your math problems are really gonna make things easier for you. Okay, so speaking of that nanograms of mercury, um, I don't ever remember what the conversion between nanograms to uh, milligrams is, because I need to get to milligrams, right, for my numerator. But I do remember that 10 to the ninth, 10 to the ninth nanograms would be the same as one gram. So here I've got nanograms canceling and I'm still with units of mercury, but mercury is now in grams. I needed to get the milligrams. So one gram is a thousand milligrams. So now this gram right here cancels with that gram right there. And I'm gonna be in the units of the things that are left over, which will be milligrams of mercury over kilograms of solution. And those are that 10 to the sixth apart from one another. They're the same kind of measurement and unit. So we're in pretty decent shape. All right, so now it's time to plug and chug this into the calculator. So let's go ahead and let's get that started. Uh, there's a lot of math here. Um, so I wanna just show everybody uh, verbatim how this can get typed into your calculator with handy dandy math calc cam. 
So if we take everything that's in our numerator and we say that, you may have already typed this in once, you don't know that, 1.8 times 1 times 1 times 1,000. Whoa, where did calc cam go? Crazy. Times 1,000, and then times 1,000. That is our numerator. Most of you want to hit enter right there. Don't. Go ahead and just keep writing out the problem. Go ahead and hit your divide by a thousand and then divide by your 10. Now this is where in your calculators, you're either gonna wanna write E, right? Like if you have an E, okay, and you try to do the ninth, it's gonna give you the wrong answer because now what you're saying is 10 times 10 to the ninth. You don't want 10 times 10 to the ninth, you want you just want 10 to the ninth. So you either have to take out that zero and do one e to the ninth, or the way that I think about these kinds of problems, because it's 10, just 10 to the thing, I just do the carrot, 10 raised to the ninth. You enter it in and lo and behold, you get an answer out. Now my calculator for reasons that I don't remember, goes ahead and it rounds when numbers get really small like that. Um, that's a setting in my calculator. Your calculator may have a similar setting, but let's pause and think here for a second. All we did was multiply or divide by some factor of 10. Should our answer be rounded to a two? Probably not. So this is where on your calculator, you might have to actually select that number again. Um, and however your calculator has that set up. And if, in my calculator, when I do that, it shows up here is that 1.8 e to the negative sixth. So when I leave calc cam now, and I go back to this cam, then I've got my answer as 1.8 times 10 to the negative sixth. That's gotta be 1.8 times 10 to the negative six milligrams of mercury for one kilogram of solution, or in other words, 1.88, 1.8 times 10 to the negative six ppm of mercury. So that's a rundown of some other example problems involving not dilutions, but problems involving other solutions and uh, ways we do calculations regarding solutions. Make sure you take a look at your homework. Make sure you check out the practice problems in the book. And please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Have a good one.